Smash Brothers, the king of all fighting games. Well, at least on the Nintendo-based consoles. So I guess it's more like the party fighting game, but can you seriously say with a straight face that you don't enjoy Super Smash Brothers? Who doesn't enjoy mercilessly beating Nintendo characters into the ground? The answer is no one, and you're a liar if you say otherwise. Smash Brothers is just one of those games that you don't ever forget. It's rarely updated save for once a new console, and it always brings about a whole lot of good times. It's great, yes, but it could be much greater, and that's why we're here today. Welcome to the top 10 characters that should be in Super Smash Brothers. Okay, I know. Just hear me out before you stop watching and leave me a nasty comment. I think the only reason this guy is on my list is for the sake of completeness. Yes, completeness. It's always good to round out the cast, and like it or not, Waluigi is part of the cast. He might not be the best of anything or bring anything incredibly unique, but I think that he should be in the next game. He's not the best contender here, and that's why he's only number 10 on the list. I was trying to think of what Waluigi might do if he actually had a full moveset. In Brawl, he does a racket stomp move that can be pretty good if you, you know, don't know how to jump, I guess, and that could be one of his special moves. They should probably just give him a tennis racket and let him hit tennis balls at people endlessly. Sort of like how pick and shoot those arrows. The move is fun to use, but you really, really hate the person who's doing it to you if you're on the receiving end. His regular smash attacks could just be some harder hits with the racket, nothing too fancy. I think the character would actually be pretty solid as long as he could be super annoying, just like his personality. I mean, it's Waluigi. The creativity train sort of ended with him. Now for the first real contender we have Bomberman, appearing most notably on the Super Nintendo where he had 5 entries. Yeah, that's right, 5. You think he's compensating for something? Only about a year apart, those Bomberman titles took off, changing only mildly between each entry. I think that Bomberman would make a pretty good addition to the Smash Brothers lineup. Of course, all of his moves would have something to do with bombs in some way. Think about the different power-ups that you attain while playing Bomberman, and each of those can be reformed into a different move on the character. You could have a charging based attack like from the N64 version where you hold the bomb and it gets as large as possible before having to throw it. You got time bombs, sticky bombs, bomb bombs, does it really matter? The character has been around forever and it's sort of amazing to me that he hasn't been picked up yet for the roster. Maybe it has to do with performance issues. Now this is actually where I started to run into some controversy. For some reason I was trying to choose between Baby Bowser and Conker for my list, and was actually quite torn. But when it came down to it, making Conker a viable character seemed like much more of a challenge, where with Baby Bowser we already know what to expect. He'd shoot fire, be able to stomp and headbutt things, it would actually be pretty interesting to have a really small but extremely heavy character. It would make for a unique playstyle that isn't really in a character in Smash yet, aside from maybe Wario. I imagine him being a really hard-hitting but fragile character who's like a glass cannon. He can dish out a lot, but can't take a lot of punishment because of how much smaller he is. He'd retain the heaviness in the earlier percentages, but once you get past around 70%, his hit distance would go up drastically to compensate. Now I know that Baby Bowser is somewhat of a clone character, but that wasn't really much of a problem in the past, and you can give him a few unique moves to round him out. Sorry Conker, your games are great, but all the costumes and weapons in the world doesn't make your base character appeal to me. Maybe next time. <laughs> Ah, uh, go man. I was thinking about how awesome you would be in Super Smash Bros. You'd be able to toss coins into people's faces, hit dudes over the head with a pipe, even throw a spiked yo-yo. Yeah, Ness may already have a yo-yo, but that bitch don't trademark it! I mean, there's like four dudes with swords in the game already. I always imagined his super being him getting into that huge Mecha Gomon from the N64 as he mercilessly beats everyone on the screen. It would be awesome. Also, having him be able to do the worm crawl across the screen is essential. I mean, that's what makes his character viable.
Now here's a character that a lot of people probably thought of on their own. Little Mac from Punch-Out would be a fantastic character to add to the roster. His attacks wouldn't even have to be all that unique. I mean, he punches things. But we can add an underlying system to make his character a lot more engaging. Imagine if you landed a regular smash attack, you got a star like you would be playing the original game. Building up stars would lead to a more devastating B-standard attack, or special standard attack, sort of like if you charged up the Donkey Kong smash move to full. But instead of sitting there charging up, you actually have to land a good attack and avoid other people's smash attacks or you'd lose a star or all of your stars. I don't know, I'm not here to balance. Regardless though, he's definitely a good character for the list. I might even go as far as to say his last game was a smash hit, right? I bet a lot of you guys didn't think of these guys. Yeah, I'm sort of proud of this one. Joe and Mac is a Super Nintendo game about two cavemen who are out to save their girlfriends from some big meat dinosaurs. Throughout the game, you can pick up a variety of power-ups that would alter your basic attacks, sort of like Contra, but caveman style if that helps. A lot of these power-ups and moves can easily transfer over to the character in Smash Brothers. It could even be idyllic of the Ice Climber characters where you control both Joe and Mac at the same time, but most likely you just control one. You'll be able to club things along with throwing wheels, boomerangs, and even doing crazy somersault jumps. For a super, wouldn't it be awesome to bring out a dinosaur to do some massive attack, or even bring out a riding animal for a short time? That'd be hilarious. I think there's a lot of different ways to take the characters. Rumor has it that the game is getting an HD remake soon too, so there could even be potentially more abilities to take from that. Banjo and Kazooie have been pretty much staple Nintendo characters since the N64. They've appeared all over the place, but more sparingly as of late. They make a great addition to the game because they can bring their arsenal of moves straight from their other titles. There's almost no need to improvise moves. They have their ground pound move and standard attacks. Kazooie could even shoot out eggs for harassment damage, help him float around like Peach's parasol, and even get some air as his third jump. I leave a lot of the characters' moves up for deliberation, but the bottom line is that Banjo and Kazooie could definitely be a part of the franchise, even if Banjo is more like a mechanic these days. You know, because of that one game. That's that sucked. Now we're in for some serious monkey business. Well, more like serious crocodile business. If you've been watching all my videos, you already know that I'm a fan of Donkey Kong games and that beating King K. Rule was a pretty epic moment in my young life. And ever since Smash Brothers came out, I always thought that he would be a good character to add. You might have to take some liberties with a lot of his moves. I mean, he usually had like one to three gimmick moves per fight, but with a brand new moveset, this guy would easily fit in with the rest of the crew. Don't know how useful he'd be though. Simon effing Belmont. That's right. Do I even need to explain how easily this character could transfer into the game? I've only recently played those old Castlevania games, and yeah, they're fun. The character already has a variety of moves and items, like the fully controllable Swaga Whip thing, Holy Water, plus he's already one of the most popular characters in terms of older Nintendo games. I don't even really see how this character would be hard to implement either. I mean, Nintendo must already have some ownership privileges when it comes to the characters since, you know, they have Castlevania DS games. I guess maybe you could have argued that the character wasn't cartoonish enough, but after Snake was put in the game, I think that argument became pretty invalid. Man, Snake does look somewhat out of place sometimes. By sheer popularity alone, it might not be enough to bring him to the roster, but the amount of items and upgrades brought to the games over the years would give the character enough moves to bring to any fight. I didn't even play these games when I was a kid, and I can tell you right now, this character belongs in this game. Was, was the silhouette? Who is 
is it? Who is it? Gino is just one of those characters that is literally burned into your memory if you've played Legend of the Seven Stars. Not only did the game make headway in the RPG world, but it introduced some extremely original Super Mario characters, and then they were just never seen or heard from again. Gino was definitely a fan favorite though. He has those great special moves like Gino cannons, launchers, shooting his fists, and of course his epic Gino world that did 9999 to basic enemies for the insta-kill. Now to be frank, the probability of actually ever seeing Gino again seems pretty low. Not impossible, but low. I mean, we've never seen those characters in anything else, and that probably has to do with the fact that Squaresoft and Nintendo partnered to make the game. And Squaresoft doesn't technically exist anymore, and is merged with Enix, and the game is older now, it's all mixed up! And it's probably impossible to get the licensing for all those characters. But even if it took 10,000 man-hours for them to track all that stuff down and put them in the game, would it all be worth it just to see them in action on the battlefield? I rest my case. Alright guys, thanks for watching. I want to see your guys' list down below, so let me know what your top 5 would have been, and don't forget to thumbs up and favorite the video. Oh man, get the smash ball!